That's why I'm so emotional about this topic. You have a gift every single day. Like seriously, if you were to give someone a gift and they didn't appreciate it, they didn't care about it, they didn't use it, they didn't thank you, they didn't show gratitude, they weren't humbled by the gift, would you still give them a gift? Would you still give them a gift? The answer is no. But yet God, the universe, the collective conscious, the ancestral knowledge of all of our ancestors, however you identify spiritually, whatever you would like to call it, do you think that the dreams and the visions and everything that you get, that they're limiting them based upon your false beliefs and the imposter syndrome your bank account, the conditions that happened to you 10, 20, 30 decades ago. You have the ability to create whatever you want in your life. And I want that for you. So now you know the meaning and belief behind why you are emotionally reacting to stress obstacles the way that you are. So now you can make more informed decisions, but you have to do what's called the trauma work. You have to go back into those painful experiences as children and re-edit like a director of a movie, the mental movie playing in your head. And you're able to do that using what's called associated and disassociated thoughts or dreams. Okay, you realize this, you may not realize this, but when you watch TV, Netflix, or movies, there's multiple camera angles. Sometimes it's first perspective. That's going to be an associated dream or thought. Then there's also like the, the, the camera angle that's pulled back and you can see the whole room, it's wide angle, it's in a third person view. That would be a disassociated thought or a disassociated dream. Now the interesting thing about how you can use this NLP technique is we only experience happy dreams and happy thoughts from the first person perspective because it's more intimate. Like you're, it's a happier feeling. So you're not afraid of it. So you relive it and you rethink it or you dream about it in the first person, like from your own eyeballs. But the painful experiences and the things that we think about in our past that, get, you know, cause this chaos or cause this trauma. We don't like to think about it because it stirs up old emotions. And what you probably don't realize is that you disassociate from those thoughts. So when you think about any of those painful thoughts or maybe some painful things that are going to happen in the future, you always pull back from the camera angle because you don't want to be close to it. And you experience it from far away rather than first person point of view camera angle. So now that you know that, these painful experiences, we have to associate with them. We have to go into the mental image and literally play the movie reel subconsciously in our mind and go back and edit the experience. So let me give you an example. When, when I was a young kid, like many young kids today, my father said, hey, boy, I'll be there to come pick you up. Or, hey, boy, I'll be at the game. Or, hey, boy, I'll be at practice. But rarely did he ever show up. And I remember one summer evening, I lived on a farm, and I was waiting for my father to come pick me up. I was really excited. I was sitting on the porch step of the old farm, and he never showed up. And this happened time and time again. And as a young boy, you're wondering, what have I done? What's wrong with me? Why doesn't he want to spend time with me? And this created a lack of unworthiness in me for a really long time. Like I wasn't even aware of it. Then that created the soothing techniques and the self-medication and the drinking and all of the other things because I didn't know how to process my emotions and I made bad decisions because of, it, because of it, because our emotions drive our decisions. And so I did some trauma work in a men's group, like right before I actually found my tumor. And 
one of the exercises they had me do is rooted in an NLP technique, and I'll share it with you, is that I had to go back into that dream. You like close your eyes and get in a calm, quiet area, and you go inside your mind, and you mentally remember the experience. And so me, the young seven, eight-year-old Nick, sits on the porch. He's in the dream, I'm sitting on the porch like I remember it. But instead of hopefully my dad shows up, which I've already replayed that memory thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times in my life, hoping and praying he showed up. But in this version, the adult Nick showed up. And I was going to speak to that young boy. Man, this is hard. It was hard then. And so... My mentor at the time, he said, what do you want to say to the young seven-year-old Nick sitting on the um, porch step waiting for his father to show up who never comes? What do you want to say to him as an adult male now, knowing what you know now, Nick? And I knew instantaneously what adult Nick was going to say to the young boy, Nick. And it was, I love you. You're enough. And you're worthy. And that was a freeing, a very freeing experience. It lifted so much stress and so much torment on my heart. But I already had that inside me. I already was capable of having that conversation. I just didn't know. And I felt a lot better about those situations. And in the times where I really struggle in life, when I, when I don't really understand why I've gotten this opportunity or why someone would believe in me, because I still deal with feelings of unworthiness quite a bit, I practice that exercise. And I go back and I let the broken boy inside of me know that it's going to be okay, that you are enough, that you're worthy, that you deserve this, that you're not broken. And we move the fuck forward one step at a time. But when I go into that dream, guys, I associate with it. I always used to disassociate with it. So it was like me going into the, the thought and the dream, but from like way back out in the woods looking at young Nick, right? It was like from afar watching it go down. But in this thought exercise, I had to go and associate. I had to go into it and face it. I had to face my vulnerability. You have to rise in the face of vulnerability, guys. That is the definition of courage. I didn't want to handle the truth of that conversation for nearly 26 years. I avoided it. And every time I avoided it, I went and did things that didn't serve me. And I hurt myself for no reason. And some of you might be going through that too. That, those are losses. That is losing. You're choosing to lose. Do not be willfully blind anymore, which means you could have known, but you actively made a decision not to. 